For students in Vancouver, we have a resource that we can use to generate our site plans, and that is Van Maps. So if you look up Van Maps or go to maps.vancouver.ca, it will take you to this portal. And if you scroll down, we can go to the property viewer down here. This is a GIS based application and we um, on initial view, it doesn't show very much information, but we have the option to add more layers of information. So um, if you explore some of the panels up here, we have the opportunity to see our layer list. Uh, we can go to the legend of um, what the various lines and icons mean. We can also select a base map. So uh, if you want a high quality aerial background, you can select this 2018 imagery. Um, and if we scroll into an area, we can see that uh, the resolution is pretty good. It's, it rivals Google Earth uh, Pro. So um, this is nice. You can see uh, the planting details, especially because this was taken in spring. So throughout Vancouver, you can get some pretty good information about, um, about parks and planting and street trees. Uh, so we can also add layers here. You see that in this GIS application, they have outlined the properties and the blocks. They also have the property numbers. There's more information we can get here. So if you go into the add data panel and look for um, footprint, you'll see that there's a polygon shape here called building footprints. We'll add that to our map. We can also look up contour can add the contour lines to our map. And the last thing I will look for is block. They have city block outlines. I'm going to add those. There's other information within this. So if you just take off uh, your search and click through some of these pages, um, you'll see that you can, you can show easements, you can show the right of way widths, which can be interesting. So if you were drafting in roads, you could click on this and it will tell you how wide the right of way is, in this case, 66 feet. We also have other information like green stormwater infrastructure, greenways, parks, etc. So there's quite a bit of information here, but this is the information that's going to help us draft a site plan in Rhino. Uh, so I will just go up to my layer list. I'm going to turn off the right-of-way widths because we don't need those right now. And I'm also going to turn off the property information. So once we have these layers selected um, and we look at our sites, I'm going to select an area. Over here where Angelica's site is, as an example, we can zoom in. Uh, so that our entire site is contained within this view and then go to the print icon. Here we have some options. So I'm going to select the largest paper size, which is the tabloid landscape. And then I'm going to go into advanced. I would like to preserve the map scale. Um, so I want to make sure that what I see is this same scale here. This is one to 200 or sorry, this is 200 meters shown here. I can include the legend, which I'm not going to include because I know what all the lines mean. And I'm gonna change the scale bar unit to meters. I'll change the print quality to 300. And then I'm gonna go print. Once the print has been created, you can download it. So once we have this PDF downloaded, we can go back into Rhino. I'm going to open a new file. Then I'm going to select large objects meters. 
and I'm going to import the PDF file that I saved before. I'm going to preserve the units and we will scale this up later. So um, just al allow all of these other settings and press OK. Now you see that uh, this big yellow square shows up and it doesn't seem to have a lot of information on it. You just click over, you see that this actually is um, the background of the PDF. So what we're going to do is ungroup it and I'm going to delete that background. Now you see you have not just the aerial image in the background, which is brought in as a surface, but you also have all of these building outlines. There's also hatches included. So the first thing we want to do is um, uh, get rid of the background um, surfaces. So I'm just going to go through and select these tiles and begin deleting them. Okay. We're left with the hatches of the blocks. So the next thing I'm going to do is use the command cell hatch. That's going to select all of the hatches and I'm just going to delete them. I'm left with this line work here. Now, just to double check that this is all flattened and uh, not actually related to the topography, I'm going to go over into my perspective view and take a look and I can tell that it's flat. So all of the line work is flattened. So uh, the scale bar doesn't show the units, but if we want to refer to what they are, we can just open up the PDF that we saved. And we see here at the bottom, the bottom scale, the second last tick is 460 meters. So we can scale our site to match this and make sure that it's at the proper size. So we select everything here and press SC for scale. Start at the base point here and use this as your first reference point. Then type in 460, press enter. Now, if we use zoom extents to see what we have, our site model is properly scaled. Once you have this information, you can bring this into your topography model and match it up approximately um, as, as closely as possible as your existing topography model. So um, this is another way to get building information. And the reason I didn't show it before is because not everybody has a site in Vancouver. And so I wanted to create equity between the students to allow them to um, develop some skills in Rhino at the same time. Uh, but if you are working on a site in Vancouver and you want to use this resource going forward, uh, I think that it would be it'll be a lot easier than trying to trace over all of the buildings from aerials um, or extract block information like that. So use this resource and uh, in the next step, you can, you can bring this into your topography models and align it with the line work that you already have.